uh, class. Okay. So welcome to the uh, uh, new GVM light kit uh, overview. Uh, tonight we're just going to go through uh, the the what you got and how to set it all up and how to use the app and operate it. Um, in week two, we will be going through three point lighting. So I'll walk you through three point lighting, and then in week four, we're going to talk about how to light faces a little bit, just just briefly. So uh, that's what we're looking at here tonight. What you see up here are the um, uh, I forget what these are called, uh, barcodes uh, that you can scan uh, and go to the GVM website or the GVM Facebook site, or you can download the app. Now they make a uh, Android and an Apple app for these lights uh, that you can control them with. And I, 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 there's two modes on these that we'll talk about master and well, there's three modes. There's master and slave, and then there's controller, and then there's app. So there's four modes actually, uh, and we'll talk about all those. So let's go through and talk a little bit about what you're getting here. And this this should have come in one light kit. Um, the uh, third light stand will be here by the end of the week. Okay. Uh, and so you got two uh, SD80D spotlights. These are what's known as cob lights. Uh, chip on board is what cob lights are. Um, there are two basic types of uh, LEDs that go into these big single chip LEDs that go into these lights. Um, the other one I think is MFT. Uh, but this this is a new type that came out a couple of years ago. Uh, and GVM is like the person, the company that provides most of these chips to like all the other chip, the light manufacturers, and then they build their bodies around them. So that's kind of one of the reasons we went with GVM. Uh, and the cool thing about chip light or cob lights is that they were cheaper to manufacture and they put out a little bit brighter light. Um, they had a couple little things that were off put about them on the color frequencies, but for the most part, it it, it revolutionized LED lights. And the, these were the lights, these were these cob lights were the lights that made LED, big single source LED lights uh, affordable. My first LED, you know, big single source LED light was a, um, a, a Aperture 300D, daylight only. And I think I spent $1,600 for it. You can buy them for like under $1,000 now. Same light, actually the version two of that light. So the price really has come down. These lights sell currently for about 159 bucks. Um, and uh, that's pretty cheap you, that, for 80 watt light. And they make uh, different wattages. Now these, this is LED wattage, okay? And so what you gotta understand is that there's a difference between LED wattage, fluorescent wattage and tungsten wattage. If you if you read a lot of the manufacturers, LED manufacturers, brochures, and they lie, they just lie. They say that every 10 LED watt is equal to 100, um, 100 uh, tungsten wattage, which you're familiar to. You're familiar with a 60 watt light and a 100 watt light bulb that goes in your table lamp and stuff. And so if you go to the local grocery store or hardware store, they actually sell those with the tungsten equivalency is what it's called. So, you know, it's it's they're not telling you what the LED equivalency is. They're saying this is a 60 watt LED bulb. What they mean is that it's a 60 watt tungsten equivalent. These are LEDs. When they say 80 watt LED, that's what they're talking about. So again, like I said, it's not 10, you know, every you know, one uh, LED, LED uh is equal to 10 uh, or uh, 100 of the, um, every 10 is equal to 100 of tungsten. We've rated it and it's somewhere between 16 and 18. Okay, so if you're gonna do this, you gotta kind of divide this by 16. So if you take an 80 watt bulb, for example, um, like this, and, and by the way, the older light kits, the Westcots were 45 watt LEDs, which came out to be about 250 watt uh, tungsten equivalency, which isn't very bright at all. These are 80 watts. So that, you know, um, that would be right around 500 if you, you know, a little bit under that. We, we measured it out to be about 440, 440 watt tungsten lights. And that's pretty bright. You know, that's that's a good light. Really, if you were going to, you know, to supplement this light kit and buy another light down the road, what you'd want to do is buy a larger LED, something like a, a 200 or a 300 watt LED, uh, and that would give you like a thousand watt, 1.2 
K uh, uh, tungsten equivalency. That's what normal LED uh, key lights are. But this is great. We got a, a two of these 80 watts, and they're bicolor, meaning that they'll go from 2700 to I think uh, 6500 on these, and 32 to 56 on these on this one. Uh, so. This is a spotlight. Okay, it's a very bright light, and uh, it's got what's called a Bowen mount. And we'll we'll go through all that, but that's what comes with this. And then you get one Y two hundred D with a desk stand, and this is a soft light. It's actually a ring light. I'll show you what it looks like inside. There's a bunch of little LEDs in there, and uh, so we got this to use because it's a dual purpose light. You can use it as a fill light, which is what we're going to use it as. In week one, we're going to use it as the backlight, but in week two and three it will it will serve a double duty as a fill light and um and then and so it's really pretty nice it's a 50 watt which mm -hmm. the 50 watt equivalency of uh this would be well i should be able to do the math in my head uh there we go 50 divided by what did i say 0.16 equals 312 watts <clears throat> so this is about a 312 watt light this is about a 440 watt light and then it came with one softbox, and you're going to put one of the softboxes on the spotlight, and that's going to be your key light. And then it came with one barn door, and you're going to put one of the barn doors on the spotlight, and that's going to be your backlight or your background light in week one. Uh, now, you can also leave this. Con this is called a condenser. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also known as a standard uh, connector. Uh, they call it a standard. And so uh, this has what's called a bow and mount, and we'll talk about that. And then your light kit also came with <clears throat> a... Um, 20th, I believe. I, I I haven't gotten one yet, so I don't know. It's definitely not a 40 inch. Uh, right. Do you have your reflector there with you? Uh, yes, I do. So does it say what it is on it? Uh, I uh, right here. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's a five in one reflector, and those five in one reflectors have a white, silver, gold, and black. Yeah, I, I didn't understand it at first until I'm like, okay. How do I mean? How is this five? But everything is kind of reversible, and yeah, you have to flip it out in. Yeah, so it's white, gold, silver, black. Right. And you take the skin off of it. It's a uh, one-stop diffuser. So that's what they call five uh, lights. And of course, you got three full light stands. Now these light stands are really, really small at the bottom, so you have to be really, really careful about. Um, making sure they're flat at the bottom. So when you undo these, you don't want them V'd up like this or you don't want them V'd down like this. Right. You want them flat at the bottom. You What you're trying to do is get the broadest base possible. Right. And with this lights, I, I would highly recommend that you buy some, you know, sandbags. You can buy four sandbags online at um, uh, Amazon for like 24 bucks. And then you go out and buy some, you know, a hardware stores playground sand and fill double baggy them. You put fill a quart bag up with sand, press all the air out of it, turn it upside down, put it inside another quart baggy, and then you put one on each side of the sandbag. They're velcroed or zippered pouches, and 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 then put them on the light stand. So you don't want the sandbag touching the floor. You want all the light, the weight on the on the stand itself. So that's the light kit that we got, and we're gonna we're gonna go through this. And so for the uh, SD eighties. And again, this is a great little light. You know, um, I've been working on this deal with GVM for about a year and a half, believe it or not. Gone through a couple people, gone through two different styles of light, uh, you know, when I, since I started negotiating with these guys. So this is a great light. It um, It's an 80 watt, uh, 440 tungsten equivalent. Uh, it's got a Bowen uh, mount standard cover on it, and uh, and the and the important thing about Bowen mounts to understand is it's a industry standard photography mount that's been around forever, and so there are just tons and tons of. Um, you know, modifiers out there that are pretty cheap, that are surprisingly cheap uh, to find, and and uh, and so all you got to do is go out there and uh, you know do a search. Let me throw this in here real fast so I can show you. And this is just me searching. Um, I just learned a new trick that if you do option and click up here, it makes it the size of the thing. So if I go in here and I search in uh, Bowen mount 
light modifiers. And I look in here, this is what you see. Here's the soft boxes, here's snoots, here's, uh, you know, there's uh, what's called beauty dishes. Uh, there's, uh, you can get, um, uh, these are uh, reflector adapters. Uh, you can see all the different ones, barn doors. These are, this is a Fresnel lens. This is a beauty dish. This is a, uh, um, what are those called? Uh, uh, they've got a specific name, uh, space lights uh, and stuff. And you can also buy reflect or, or projectors that you can put on here and then use these little kukulorises to, um, you know, uh, project patterns on the background. They have, again, all kinds of stuff. And if you look at these, most of them are around 30, 40 bucks. Some of them are 19 bucks, you know, 17 bucks. And I use all these. You get into the Fresnels and stuff and they're a little expensive. And that, But there's tons of them. And lots of companies, Aperture, uh, Profoto, Photodiex, everybody makes them. So there's just tons of stuff out there uh, for them. And they're cheap. So that's one of the great things about this uh, is that you can use all these different modifiers on this particular light. So it comes with a condenser, which is also called a and mount standard cover and an AC power supply and a power cable. It also has an instruction manual and you get two full size lights with that as well. Now this is you know a very simple little light when you once you learn how to operate it, you want to be careful about this big LED in there. You don't want to scratch it. I usually keep this condenser on there when I'm not using it. But it's uh, it comes with a 22 inch octabox, which is a soft box, and that has dual diffusion. And it has an inside baffle diffusion, a white diffusion, and an outside diffusion. Uh, and then it has a, a grid on it. And that grid is used primarily to direct light so that the light's just not flooding out everywhere. And in, in professional lights, these come in different um, uh, grid angles, depths. So you can get really fine patterns or you can get little broader patterns on these. Uh, these are called egg crates or you know grids. Uh, and of course, it, this all can be controlled via the app. You can control everything that we're going to be talking about here uh, via the app. Um, this has got a CRI of 97 plus. Uh, the CRI stands for Color Rendition Index. And what you just need to know is that anything over 90 is good. Uh, 100 is perfect. Anything over 90 is good. Uh, it just this is it just is talking about how well the light reproduces the whole spectrum of natural color. And that's what it, it talks about because lights, you know, some lights are missing little parts of the spectrum of the visible spectrum. It's stepless, meaning that if you turn up the uh, um, intensity or the color temperature, you don't see it clicking. 80 watts of light. Uh, it's got scene lights. Um, there are different scenes you can dial in here. And it's got a fan in it, which most of these do. One of the bad things about cob lights is the, it heats up a little bit more. Uh, you can connect it with a, a phone and control that. And it's got the bow and mount. Those are all the big selling points for this that you're going through. And again, if you haven't downloaded the GVM app, I highly recommend you do that. On the back of your little... Um, the uh, uh, instruction manuals that came with these on the back of them are all the bar charts that you can log in and get those as well. Um, there's an effect button on the side over here. There's a large LCD screen that we're going to go through. And again, it's very, very easy to operate. Now, it's it's kind of plastic. You know, the this connector part down here and stuff is plastic. So you got to be careful on it. You drop it, it'll probably break. <clears throat> you know, that's it. Um, so if you look at the side, this is the release for the bow and mount. So if you're, you know, you don't have to push it in to put something on there. But if you are taking something off, you just push that back. You got to be careful because if you push that back, that, that you know, uh, softbox is going to fall right off that or the barn door will fall off the back of that. Uh, this little button right here will take you through different modes. It's called the composite button. And it will take you into like the different, uh, there's, uh, you know, uh, control mode, there's master, there's slave, and there's app modes on these. So it will cycle you through those modes. And it will, um, it will also cycle you through the scene files up here. This, this camera has eight scene files that are effect files on this. And it says, gives you the CTT, uh, here's the intensity, and you can switch back and forth between color temperature and intensity here, and this is telling you what the mode is. So that that takes you back and forth between scene files, and we'll walk you through this here in a second. Um, if you look at um, the back here, this is a, a control knob, the compound knob, and the compound knob you can go uh, iris up and down with it, or you can change the color temperature up and down. And then this is the AC power supply. 
Uh, and this is the power switch. And the power switch, this is a dual power-based light. It operates off of uh, two Sony uh, uh, F uh, batteries. Uh, and they're pretty cheap. You can buy two 970s with a dual charger for like 50 bucks. You know, so, and that will charge this light, uh, power this light for five or six hours. Uh, they're pretty robust. Uh, they look just like your BPU-90 batteries, but they have a different connector on them. And they've been out forever. So you want to get the bigger ones, the 970s um, or the the 950s i'm sorry the 970s are the bpus but uh if you flip this up you uh, operate off battery if you flip this down you operate off dc power and then there's a big fan here's the fan in the back don't cover that fan up you want to try to get air in there as much as possible and that's basically it you have a tilt knob on this and and that's it very very light 1.2 kilograms which is uh, don't remember my metric system that well so you can do eight lighting scenes on this okay so a couple different things it does matching mode and it does uh, lighting scenes so you can uh, replicate lightning or a cct loop where it color temperature it rotates through different colors it uh, does the little flicker of a candle it does a bad bulb you know and so we've already had a student that turned the light on and accidentally hit that button and got into a scene mode and a bad bulb mode was up on there and so his light was flashing on him like the bulb was broken and so he called fso and said i got a bad light and they they called me and said he's got a bad light and i called him and said do you see the little thing that says effect number uh, three up there, four up there? He says, yeah. And I said, you know, that, that hit the, hit that button. Of course it went away. So you do do a TV, the little flicker of a TV. They're here, paparazzi flashing explosions where it goes up and then comes down and then goes up again. And then uh, pulsing where it just pulses on and off. So you can do these cool things. So you could also, is this is like a camera, a still camera where you can dial in specific, you know, lighting things. You can do tongues and you can do fire. 5,000, you can do 6,000. Not sure what these are. These are different types of incandescent lights. Uh, this is a uh, mercury vapor sodium. This is candle. This is daylight. This is, you know, waning light, cloudy, and fluorescent. So you can go in and dial those in and, and have uh, each of those modes being matched if that's what you're trying to do with your light. Um, it is, a uh, again, an 80-watt light, which is pretty bright. Um, the cop, it's a cob one. It's got a 97 uh, color rendish, uh, rendi rendering index. Uh, color temperature goes from 2700, which is very, very warm, to 7500. 2700 is like a low wattage LED bulb you'd get at Target or Walmart, someplace like that. 7500 is kind of a overcast day with shadows on the ground, not completely fogged in. Um, and then, um, it's very, very light. And then we'll talk about uh, the lumens that it does uh, with the light cover on it. Uh, it's 70, uh, 7,390 lumens. And that's how we measure output of light. A uh, wattage measures the amount of light it takes to power that light. Um, uh, lumens measures the output of the light. That's what you really want to look at. And it says, you'll see this all the time, one meter. See that? One meter. 3.3 .3 feet. You'll hear us talk about that a lot when we talk about the inverse square law and how important it is to know that, that that's where you're getting the maximum 100% output out of that light at 3.3 .3 feet away from there. Uh, this is what the LCD screen looks like. Again, this, if you have a scene mode dialed in, one of eight scene modes, it will tell you this here. If you have the app, you're in the app mode, it will say it here. And then over here, it will go through and say, um, you know, commander, master, slave, and app. And then this tells you the color temperature. Um, you know, this this is the intensity of the light. This is the color temperature. And you can switch back and forth on those just by pushing in this button at the back. Uh, and this is, you can go in and change this from CCT to hue and uh, about three or four different settings as well. Um, so again, you can go really warm color temperature to really blue color temperature, 5,600 degrees Kelvin is in the middle. Remember, you got to commit to memory those five Kelvin degree numbers. We gave you 32, 56, 65, 75, and 85. Really try to do that by week two. If you don't, you're going to be guessing at white balance. If you spend the time and commit those five numbers to memory, 
by week four, you'll be able to look at any lighting situation you're at and know what the color temperature is, uh, you know, within 500 degrees. So you got to play a game here. And so this is, this is, there's a couple issues going on with these lights that we are dealing with for the first time this month. Number one, they're by color. So you can change the color temperature. We're going to have you set these up and keep it at 5,600 degrees Kelvin for this class. And we're going to have you crank this up to a hundred percent output. And then we're going to teach you how to move the light in and out a little bit. So we're going to start there. And then once you get that under control, then you can start changing color temperatures and changing the intensity on that. But we'll walk you through that, how to do that. And it may sound weird at first, but you'll you'll get the hang of that. Again, this is these, these are the apps. You can control the effects. You can control the, you know, uh, the matching here. You can control the color temperature here and you can control the uh, intensity here. So very, very simple once you have it connected. You can also slave all the lights together and have one as a master and others as slaves. Um, and so there's all kinds of stuff. We're not, we're not, that's a little bit more advanced for what we're going to do in here. We're, I had bought a GVM light kit about a year, maybe about two years ago off of Amazon. It's, um, it's one of those, um, the square ones and panel light, a panel light. Right. And, um, I mean, they're not as, a, as effective as, you know, these are, but I know I, I do, so do I have to download the app for the, this one? Cause I have the app for. Yeah. It's, app. it's the GVM two app. And so we'll okay. talk about that here in a second, okay. what it is. So yeah, just make sure it's the two because I, I have some old GVM lights too. GVM started as panel lights. If you go to the website, you'll see a lot of panel lights on there. And panel lights were really the first big LED lights. Now the problem with panel lights, and we talked about this in the week one live class, is there are all kinds of little beads in there. Each, each LED is, a, and it's each one is throwing a shadow. So you don't see that usually until the light moves or the person moves. And then you go, oh, look at all those little shadows. So that's why with, you know, uh led uh panel lights you need diffusion on it and that's what's going on with your uh yd 200 it's got a lot of little beads in there but it's got two layers of diffusion on there so that it comes across as one big light source so right. that's what it is so um i just want to show you this you can buy these f750s don't waste your time on the 750s to get the 970s mm -hmm. again you could buy two of these on amazon with a dual charger for like 50 bucks they're cheap uh and so you could power this quite a while with that and then there's the ac adapter here and um so that's it. Now, the thing I also want you to understand is that at different color temperatures, you're getting about a, a thousand lumens difference on this. And, and the CRT changes again, but remember, anything over 100 is great. Uh, so you go from 6,000 to about 7,400 uh, lumens on this. And every, you know, I think every, I used to know the lumens. Um, you won't find like calculators that calculate this for you, but I think every 1600 lumens is like, uh, a hundred, uh, a uh, hundred Watts. Uh, I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. So, but again, you start learning lumens, you know, start paying attention to the lumens on light. Don't look at wattage. That's kind of a, uh, false indicator for you. Um, so here's some of the the uh, bow and mount band. It's called a bayonet a bayonet mount. So it's common bayonet mount. This is what it looks like. It's uh, it's got some you know good things and bad things about it. You can get beauty dishes for portraits. You can get soft boxes. You can get square soft boxes, rectangular soft boxes, barn doors, snoots, projectors. You know, so it, it's a pretty robust little light that you can do a lot with. So any any questions about this particular light? You're going to use a, a barn door on one and a soft box on the other, and we're going to go through those. Yeah, I'm, and the crazy part when I was looking at. I kind of got confused last night um because I thought I had the wrong light kit because I was I guess I was paying attention to what the act the image was and I'm like okay I see this these soft boxes and this don't look like my light kit I mean yeah you were looking at the Westcott light kit now we're going through a transitional period here right doing this so yeah you guys are the very first people you're the guinea pigs and we were actually we're not supposed to roll these out to october but we ended up rolling them up uh, out a month early so you got lucky you know and so this is a common occurrence anytime we lo roll out new equipment people you know there's a there's a little bit of backlash but you, you just got to understand that if it's a 27 month degree program within that set 27 months we're going to change cameras twice okay right 
every year and a half. We'll probably change cameras twice. This is the fourth light kit we've gone through. You know, as the technology changes, we try to keep up on it. And it's a long process here. So we have to really look far out at what's coming up and trying to make those decisions. So this is a beginning level light kit. You know, that's, that's what we're looking at here. So this is a little unconventional for a soft light, but you know, the reason that I chose this light, I use a Y60, which is the big brother of this light as my, you know, blogging light here for doing all this stuff, a great light. Uh, and, uh, but the reason I, 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 this is a very light light, uh, and it came with a desk stand. So you could use it for double duty. You can use it in three point lighting. Um, you can use it just as a little fill light or a backlight, you know, on things and get it really, it's so light that you don't need a big boom arm. You can, you know, get a, you know, a $60 boom arm and light stand and put this on it with a sandbag and be perfectly fine for a backlight and get it really tight in there. And it's a really nice soft light and it's 50 Watts, which is 300 watts which is pretty good you know that's pretty good um on this so that's why we chose that and it's by color um and uh you know it's so it's a great little light uh very very simple there's actually a you know, i'll show you what it looks like inside this is what it looks like inside so it's just a bunch of little leds and it's got two layers of diffusion on that uh heavier layer and a thinner layer on on this and then on the back again you can put the sony batteries on here on and off switch uh this controls intensity this controls color temperature and this little mode button will cycle you through the different uh uh, scenes on, that you can save on here. You can save up to uh, nine scene files in here. Uh, uh, and so that's what we're going to do as well. So again, this is your backlight in week one, your fill light in week two and three. Um, use the GVM app to control this. You can set this up. Uh, we'll talk about that. There's an effect mode on the on the side panel. I don't think that's true. For some reason, I think that's false. Uh, and then the CRT is not 2700, it's 3200. That Again, that was... Uh, they're advertising that they were wrong on it. so and you can um you can again 3200 is warm 5600 is neutral you know 7500 is is uh blue um there's four is 4500 lux on here remember the other one was 7400 lux this is and this is at a 0 0.5 meters so this is what you got to pay attention to and 1500 lux at one meters so I think 1200 lux was 250, 1200 lux was 250 watts. <clears throat> so again, this is about 330 watts. So at one meter, 3.3 feet. We talk about this. When we talk about it, we're usually talking about it as three feet, six feet, and you know, uh, 12 feet. Every time you double the distance, you lose a massive amount of light. From 3.3 th th feet to 6.6 .6 feet, you lose 75% of the output of your light. From 6.6 uh, .6 feet to 13.2 feet, you lose 90% of the output of your light. So it's called the inverse square law, and it's massive. Now, you're also your light size quadruples every time you double it too so uh you'll learn more about the inverse square law as we get into lighting uh so very very cool you can put two batteries on there it doesn't operate with one battery you have to have two here's the ac plug that goes in there it's a plastic so be careful because if you drop this one it's definitely going to break they're about 150 bucks to buy these lights uh and they come unfortunately they come with a stand and a and the desk stand as well this is what they're very very thin you know very very thin and they have this little soft board on here with the hope of it commissioning some of the stuff here's the back again um this is the you know, power switch on and off this is where you plug the power into this is intensity zero to 100 this is color temperature uh 3200 to 5600 degrees kelvin this is a mode control switch where you can go up and down between the different scenes that you uh, dial in here and then your uh, things don't cover up these holes around here. Those are your ventilation holes on there. It's, it, it doesn't have a fan in there. It's got a big heat sink in there. Um, the cool thing about this is, you know, it's it's really, really light, very, very small. You can fit this in all kinds of places. Uh, and it, you know, it goes from 3,200 to 56. And you can control, here's what the app th for this particular one looks like from GVM. And you just dial in the light and this is what comes up. You can turn it on and off by pushing this in. This controls the color temperature. This controls the intensity. You can go up here and hit the little, there's a little thing up here in the corner that you can hit to save that. It doesn't look like this anymore. You don't have that drop down menu. Um, you'll see 
what it looks like. And again, here's the desk stand. Here's the full size stand on this. You see how short those legs are, man. That is scary. Um, and then, uh, you know, so to put it on here, the, some of your light stands, these come, yeah, they have a little rubber cap on here. And right. so the little rubber cap on the light stand is really all about, there's a quarter 20 screw thread on <laughs> So if you're going to use a light stand to put like a GoPro on here or any standard quarter 20 thing, you want to keep that from being boogered up, you know, by putting things over it and banging into it. So keep the rubber cap on if you can. The lights will go right over it with the rubber cap on. Again, what that's doing is protecting that quarter 20 screw that's underneath there. Um, <clears throat> these are, you know, aluminum and plastic light stands. They're not the best light stand down the road. You know, you really need to look at getting some heavier duty light stands and boom arm or a C stand. You know, it just comes with the territory. Uh, right. You know, that's it. So uh, you, you don't need to buy anything for this class or any other class in DCBS. Everything that we give you is what you need to shoot with. You don't have to buy a thing. OK, but there are different things that you can buy that will make your life much easier. That's the way I kind of phrase it. So that's it. So. Uh, you can also tilt this up and down. There's a, you know, this big knob here. Now, again, be careful of this knob. They're plastic. And so you can over crank it and break it. And you don't want to do that. Um, here's what the back looks like. Again, you slide the batteries in. These are just like the MP1s, except you don't have to push anything to get these out. These right. just pop in and pop out. Okay. That's very, very simple. Uh, here's the back of this again, um, on and off. Uh, the power switch, the power where you plug power into, this is your brightness control, this is your color temperature control, uh, and then the screen will tell you, if you, you can put it in different channels, this will cycle you through the different channels up and down if you hit the mode switch. That's if you were in a master-slave kind of situation, and you can see it says rotate uh, slave, master, and app. Those are the four things you can get into here. Um, and uh, we're, we're going to stay primarily in rotate and app. We're not getting into the master slave stuff. You only have three lights, so it's not that uh, uh, big a deal. Uh, and so it's very, very basic. You know, very these don't push in at all. This pushes in, these push in, these just cycle you through. Um, and it's very, very simple sw switch on there. Uh, this is kind of a little bit bigger view of what that looks like. Um, and then um, you, this will tell you this is not in there. This is you know a lie. You don't see that there. Uh, this will tell you the color temperature down here. Uh, I think it only goes from twenty three to fifty six on one, and or thirty two to fifty six on one, and twenty seven to sixty five on the other. So very very simple light, and nothing really complex about it. Um, you know, just know that there's a master mode where you can adjust, you know, uh, slave slaves to it and adjust all, everything. There's the app mode. I have not been able to get into this. I, I still don't know how to get into this. I'll be honest with you. Uh, I've spent about an hour trying to figure that out. I think, I think that was wrong. I think that's just for the SD80. They had it on the YD200. I don't think it's on the YD200. Um, again, you can adjust your brightness. You can adjust your color temperature. You can adjust your... Um, uh, channels and there's 11 channels that you can put in here and that's if you have a bunch of different lights and you want to set them up the channels uh here's all the channel information and the lighting interfaces that you can tie into that you're never going to do that don't pay attention to that this is what the um uh, yd200 looks like uh the app for that uh there's a bunch of stuff on here this is yeah this you got you got it online i've uh, been had it i've been had this for my other light kit that i have yeah. So, did you were you able to connect to it? Uh, yeah, I, I've connected to it a few so times. Yeah, it's Bluetooth, so it, you know right. you have a Bluetooth turned on on your phone, and then it's pretty easy to connect. And then once you're connected, you're all set. We're not going to do any of this online joint control between lamps and lanterns. That is all online stuff. Uh, just to make sure that you keep it clean, that you keep it away from water, uh, you don't drop it, uh, you know, that you make sure you have your, the right power supply and plug it in. If you plug the SD80 power supply into the YD200, not going to be good. Um, again, that's what it's saying here. Please use the matching ones and the same Sony batteries. It's not waterproof. You can't get it wet. Uh, it's, uh, don't have it around corrosive material. Um, it, again, it will fall over with these light stands. So be careful. It's all top heavy. And uh, that's it. There's a simple troubleshooting. This is all in your uh, instructions. And here's what the barn door looks like. Now, there is a problem with this barn door. This is a very fragile barn door. Mine already broke. Uh, one of the screws fell out. 
<clears throat> and so uh, it doesn't rotate. That's my problem with it. So you want the big side panels, uh, the big bigger panels on the side, and you want the little panels on the top um, that way. And this is the soft box, and this is the white one. So so that's it. And then, of course, you got a 5-in-1 reflector. So while I'm talking about the 5-in-1 reflector, let me just show you this. What the heck did I do with my 5-in-1 reflector? Um, I just had it out here. Um, Here it is. I have a big GVM light, softbox light. That is. I have a giant ring light from GVM as well. So this is what a, the reflector looks like. And what I want to show you is how to fold this baby up. And so it's pretty simple. And there's lots of videos online about this. So if you unfold it like this and you hold it out in front of you like a pizza and you got both thumbs on top, just take one thumb and put it on the bottom and your fingers on the top. The other one with the thumb on the top, fingers on the bottom, and you just twist it just like that. And it comes together just like that. Very, very easy. So uh, <laughs> if, if we want to keep producers busy on a set, we give them a reflector and say, hey, could you fold this up for us? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 20 minutes later, they come back and go, I, I can't do this. Uh, and there's different ways. There's different size reflectors, and there's different ways to to fold each of those. And you know, there's all kinds of great videos on there. So let's let's take a look at the light. So I'm going to stop sharing so you can see me, and I'm going to bring the lights in one at a time. So this is the. Um, so before I do that, let me just talk about the soft soft box. So this is the soft box. And so I just want to show you a couple tips. There's a video that uh, somebody posted on the Facebook page that goes through that. So here's what I do. Here's what I would recommend you do. Uh, these are called spokes. Okay, these are spokes. And there's a small end to the spoke and there's a larger end to the spoke. This goes into the uh, uh, Bowen ring, Bowen mount ring. This goes into the light. So before you put these in for the first time, what I'd recommend you do is, let's see where the empty hole is right here. You you take this uh, and you where the hole is right here. You kind of put it in there and you kind of bend it around like this, right. so it opens up that hole. Because these things are flat down, and so if you're trying to get that in, and you it was you know, hard. I caught hell putting it together last night. <laughs> yeah, and so okay, it go. It's got a little you know plastic elastic thing right here that's got to go through. So you put it in there. And so that video showed them putting it all together in here. Now, here's the other tip I'm going to give you that's going to save you a lot of time and headache. If you have gaffer's tape or duct tape, uh, you know, tear off a little bit of gaffer's tape mm -hmm. and then put it right at the edge where the spoke goes into the, um, the thing. And you can see it. So it would be like if you looked at mine right here, let me flip this around. This is where it's going in. So I right. take this and I would just tape it right there. Okay. A little piece of tape there. And I've done that all around here. And so that way I can go like that and they don't fall out. If you did that and didn't tape them, all those would fall out. Okay. That's right. So that's a pain in the butt. So yeah, it was a that, pain last night putting that together. Uh, yeah, I it's, actually, I it's probably, really the hardest thing about the light kit. It you know, is. The light kit is very easy. So what you do is the, you know, the bow and mount goes on the outside and you just start and you go around. Okay. And so you're going to make mistakes and you just bend these in. And so the first ones are pretty easy. They go in right away. Okay. They just go around. Not too bad. And so again, you want to skip that one and you want to go into there. And now you see they start getting a little bit harder. Tough. Yep. Okay. That goes in and then you keep going come down and you got to bend it and this one goes in and and after a while you will see that these kind of bend see how that's bent <laughs> okay that's okay you know that's that's perfectly fine that will help it make it easier and then you just keep bending it and keep putting them in and you just go around and put each one in so that's it so when you get done that's it and then you can close it up and velcro it i don't i don't really velcro that much in behind because I want this open at the back to release a lot of the hot air in here. Right. So that's it. So when, when you have that built like this, you just take it. And the, now here's the other trick. If you have the light, let me bring this in so you can see. If you have the light set up, 
what I do is I get it, I get it at my level and I tilt it up like this. And these are plastic. So you got to really make sure that you got them cranked down. And the, you're, you, when you put the lights on there, make sure this on there. Again, to release this uh, condenser, you push in on that, comes right out. And then you take your soft box and you just align it with one of the spokes at the top and you just click it and it's in, it's in right there. And then you can crank it down. So much easier than trying to fight it. So now when you got that set, let me just go through this and show you how to put on the uh, diffusion panels. So it comes with two diffusion panels. It comes with a little small one like this, okay, that goes in here. And what they show you how to do is they show you how to hook it onto this elastic thing right here that the thing goes. Yeah, I popped you... one last night, but yeah, it, don't don't do that. <laughs> what you do is you put it you put it on the rod right, right. in front of that plastic thing, and so that will it will stretch out and fit on there. But I really don't want you putting the small one on there. And the reason why is it takes away a little bit too much light for this light. You you know that's great if you're doing a close up of a beauty shot of a face. Right, you're double bouncing. But you know that's not what we're going to. So do. you're saying the, to uh, connect that onto the rods itself, right? Connect it onto the rods. Don't connect it onto the rubber thing. Well, that's you know. what I did. I, yeah. But I, I pop. I pop that's why. one of the the deals with the rod. Not that I actually got that together, and I, I mean it didn't really kind of matter with the rod because the tension from it kept you know everything together. So you yeah. know. So not bad. So then what you do is you find the corners, you find two corners. Right. And you want to, you want the key to this is you want to put it on the inside of the Velcro because you want the you, you so you got to get it like on the back part of the Velcro. And then you just go around and put it in and you know make sure the corners are tight and you go down one at you know one at a time. And so when you do this it becomes really pretty easy after you've done this a few times. First couple of times you're probably going to struggle with it a lot. But, you know, after a while, you'll get kind of a routine going. And again, you just want to put it towards the back and make sure that it's tight. So that's pretty good. I'm tilting down here. So let me bring this over so I can see it. I'm going to bring this up. So knocking things over. So now you can see that's on there pretty tight. And I can go through there and tighten that up if I want. Right. <laughs> again, you can see the plastic thing doesn't tighten very well. So now you've got the grid. Okay. So now when you put this on and the grid has Velcro on the back of it and you do the same thing, you just find kind of a corner and you go up and start the corner and this goes in and you want to put it towards the back sort of to get it back up there and you just go corner to corner and kind of stick that in and put the Velcro right along there and it will go right in pretty easy. So once you have that on, it's pretty set. And so what I do is I usually try to keep, if I'm shooting in the studio most of the time, I keep this belt. You know, I don't take it apart every time. And so that will save a lot of time. So that's it. You're building it right as you go along. Again, if you don't get it on there right, you can always pull it off and put it back on. I know a lot of people go through and they tag, tag it, you know, in different places and then go back through and you know, do it, kind of make it a little easier. But for me, it doesn't really matter. So that's basically it. And you're just going through and putting it on. I probably could get a little bit tighter going through here. But, you know, again, it's going to look something like that. That's not very good job. Okay, there we go. Let me get this on. Usually I'm standing up for this part. So I'm bringing this in. I guess it's not going on the velcro there we go a little bit better better that's it so this is what it's going to look like when it's on so th that's the soft box and then you can see if you turn it on let me turn the, let me turn the light on uh, i'm on the app right now so let me and so also when you go into the app what i did is i labeled these lights so i have the lights labeled for what I what they're going to be used for. So this one is my key light. And it looks like I need to add these devices for some reason. Hmm. I just had them connected. Let me see which one I'm connecting to. 
searching for nearby devices. My devices. I got all of them on. Is that one? So we can discover those. Okay. So they're all kind of on right now. Searching for devices. Okay, while that's searching, let's just go through and we'll walk you through what you're going to see here. Okay, so if you're looking at the side of the light here, and I'm going to turn this off and turn it back on again, that will probably cause it to throw come up here. So you can see I can control the brightness. So right now it's in a bat, it's in a effect mode. So if I hit this, it goes out of the effect mode now, and now I can control the brightness up and down uh, with this. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm controlling the brightness. Okay. But if I hit the effect mode, now I can go in and I can change the different effects. If I push it in, it changes from effect to effect to effect. Three, four, five. And then if I hit this again and get out of that, uh, it, it goes there. Now, also what you can do is you can touch this once and it cycles through different settings. Zero, 10, 12, 30, 50, 80, 100, just by hitting it. And then if I uh, hit and hold this in, then you're going to see the color temperature started flashing right there. And so now I'm controlling the color temperature. Uh, and so it doesn't work the same way. You can't push it in. So you can go from 2,700 degrees Kelvin all the way down here, very, very warm. You can see how warm that light is all the way up to you know 7,500 degrees Kelvin. Very, very blue. We're going to set this up. When you set it up on your app, you get your app set up. Save this as a setting for 100% and 65, uh, 5,600 degrees Kelvin. That's daylight. That's what you're going to be using uh, to light with. And then we'll talk about that. So that's it. So th that's the light. That's you know the only thing you need to know about that. And again, to get this off, you just push that back. But hold on to this because it will come off. So that's this light. Um, Again, very, very simple. Read the instructions, pair it with the uh, uh, app. Y you have to you have to make sure the lights stay on. you'll you'll run into the problems for the first several times you do this with the, the app dumping out on you. So just know that. but it's it's pretty easy to just put this into the right mode. Um, and then you can, you know, uh, go through and and change it. Uh, so let me get into the different modes here. There you go. So that's the this light. Let's take a look at the Y200. It's pretty simple. Oh, let's talk about the barn door for a second. Let me turn this one off. So here's the barn door. And again, this is a lot like the, this is the same bow and mouth. It just gives me this a little bit bigger light stand. So struggling with this one. So this is it. So you can see these don't really, you can tighten these down, but they're going to come on loose. They should be like this where they stay. And so what you can do is you want to have the big ones on the side. And that way you can, again, I lost one of the screws already on this, but it should stay when you, this one's a little loose. So I have to get a new barn door for this. They're like 39 bucks, but you can control the light. You can pan them in and get slivers of light on stuff. Uh, so if you're looking in the background here, I can get little slivers of light on things and I can take it off. Um, so you also can use the condenser. You can just leave the condenser on there. And then for a lot of people, what a lot of people do is they take the condenser and then they get some diffusion panel, they get some gels and stuff, and they'll put on the front of this with the little um, clothespins and, you know, uh, file clips and stuff like that. But uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, when you're not using the barn door, you know, close them up, but don't leave the light on and close them up because you'll overheat that light. So make sure that you have the light turned off before you uh, turn them on. Um, let's take a look at the Y200D. Again, the light um, is what it looks like. And very, very simple. Okay, so if you look at the back of it, uh, this is it. Very simple. This, this controls the uh, brightness 
Oh, I'm in a map. Am I still in the app mode? Yeah. I'm in a slave mode. <laughs> So let me get out of the slave mode. I'm in, there's the app. Let's we'll, we'll see if the app recognize me yet. This will recognize me just dial in. Here we go. So now I'm in the app on this one. So I got the app up right there. And so now I can control this. I can turn it up and down. Okay, you can see that, and I can change the color temperature on this. Again, if you go up here and you hit that little thing up in the corner right there, you can save the scene. So you can save it as a scene. And I have, I want you to save that as 6,500 degrees Kelvin or 5,600 degrees Kelvin at 100% as uh, CVD. And that way you can call that up easily, but you can change this. So now if I go into the mode button again and I go back to rotate, once I'm in the rotate mode up here, then I can use this and I can iris down with this. Dim it down or I can change the color temperature from 32 to 56. Very simple. And again, once you're in the mode here, you can switch back and forth between the different channels here uh, if you're in slave. But again, most of the time you're going to be in app or you're going to be in rotate mode. That's it. And so that's it. Again, very, very, you know, plastic light. You can't take the diffusion panel off unless you take all the screws out. Uh, I've already tried. It's a pain in the butt. Uh, but please try to keep those on. Um, but it's it's a great little light kit. Uh, so any questions about the lights? Anybody have any questions about the lights? Not thus far. Yeah, they're pretty simple. Um, you, we'll talk more about the inverse square law and about dynamic range and about the job of each of the three lights. Um, there's five lights in three-point lighting. There's a key light, a backlight. You always have to have a key light and a backlight. And then there's a fill light usually. But you, besides the fill light, you can also have a background light or you can have a side light. You don't see a lot of side lights because it, it the job of the side light is to create a texture and uh, show you detail on things. If you're shooting people or objects, you don't want to see a lot of texture or detail. Right. Unless you're shooting like a coin, a close-up of a coin where you want to see all that, or you're shooting like a, a wide shot of a forest, a pine forest, for example, where you want to see all that little detail, then nice side light from the sun works well. Um, so, uh, they call it raking light. Um, you know, archaeologists use it to read glyphs and stuff because it shows all the little details in it. So, uh, the background light we're going to use in week one, you're just going to use one of the ST80s to blast through a Kukuloris. A Kukuloris is just any device that casts a shadow. And so you could use kind of, you know, a leaf or something. I've used leaves. I've used branches. I've, you know, I've cut out cardboard. There's two videos in the week one assignment that show you how to make your own Kukuloris. It's not a bad thing to do to put shadows in the background for like interviews and stuff. Uh, you can also buy reflectors or um, projectors for your SD80. Uh, they're expensive. They're about four or 500 bucks. And you can put little, you know, small little gobos in. You can have custom gobos with your logo on it and have it in the background. So um, it's it's pretty cool to be able to do that. Um, again, that's the bow and mounts opens up a whole new world to you guys being able to do that. Uh, we will use the reflectors outside for the uh, shallow depth of field shot. Uh, in week three, um, the shutter speed shots inside, you're going to be using your three point light kit. Now, um, the, all the diagrams and stuff that you see in the uh, uh, assignments are for the Westcott light kits. We're changing those slowly, but we're we're still experimenting with these. We want to see how far away we, we we're going to still have you start at three feet, but you may need to back that off a little bit because these are twice as bright as the Westcott's. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. If you see three feet, you might want to say four feet instead, you know, and then you know four to eight feet uh is the doubling the distance so um that's about it we're again we're going to use the sd80 with the softbox as your key light primarily we're going to use the sd80 with the barn doors or the condenser as your backlight uh but except in week one where we're going to use that as the background light and we're going to use the yd200 as your a uh, backlight on that any question the other questions cool Okay, well, thanks for coming out tonight, and I'll have this posted up, and I'm going to put it on the um, YouTube page as well. So if you guys need anything at all, as usual, don't hesitate. Just pick up the phone and give me a call. 
Okay, Ryan. Have a good night. You too.